Hi everyone, I would like to thank you for joining my online CFE exam review course or uh, any other CFE exam review courses I do. The objective of this video is to give you an idea about what you are going to do today before attending the class so in that way you are prepared for my CFE exam review course. My objective always is to give you all the tools that you have before attending the class so you can pass the exam within a short period of time. If you are attending my live classes within one week or if you are attending my online classes within four weeks. So what you need to do for you to access after we have registered you with ACFE, number one, what you need to do, you need to try to reset your password. So you need to go to acfe.com. So go acfe.com. And after that, try to click login. And in the login, you can see here in the bottom saying something called forget my password. So you click on it, you say forget my password. You need to enter the same email that you have used to register for the CFE exam uh, course. After that, ACFE will send you an email to your email address. You click on the link inside your email address to reset your password. Now, if you already member with ACFE before, you don't have to do this exercise. The only thing you have to do, if you have an account before, or if you are a member, you just enter your email address here, and then you enter your what? Your password. So whatever password you have selected, you can enter it here, and then ACFE will allow you to log in. And then you can log into your account for the first time, or if you are a member, you have logged before. Now, let me explain to you what you have here. You have here your ACFE membership. Can you see here the number under my name saying this is ACFE membership? Of course, my type is CFE. I already passed the CFE exam. M maybe more than, uh, now what, 15 years ago. So this is where is the type. The saying is CFE. Uh, after that, you can see here your membership, when the membership it, it will expire. Also, you can see here next to my, my CFE, you can see my transaction. Now, in case you don't see this, what you need to do, do, you need to go on top and you can see something called my account. So you can go click on my account and you see everything there. Now, how can you access your CFE drop course? What's the meaning CFE drop course? Is the questions that ACFE, they have 1,500 questions for you to practice the CFE exam. You will go under my transactions. And once you go click under my transactions, you can see different items here. But one of the items that you will see, you will see CFE exam prop course 2020 or 2021 and, and, and whatever year you register. You don't click on the printer. There is a window next to the printer. Make sure you are using Chrome. If you are using Internet Explorer or you are using certain browser, maybe it will not appear. So make sure you are using the right uh, one. So what you click, you click on that window. Once you click on that window, new window will appear and they, they are actually going to give you the license activation code that you need to do. Can you see this is where is the license activation code? You need to copy the license activation code and then next to CFE exam um, uh, prop course, you need to click uh, access the CFE prop course. This will lead you to a different window where they will ask you for login and password. It's the same username and same password that you have. So you enter your username, you enter your password, and then you log in. Once you log in, the system is gonna ask you to enter your license activation code. So this is where the code that you copied from that, that page, next to this link where you click on, you can copy it from there and you can paste it here. And then they say, okay, save. Once you save, in that case, you activated your CFE prop course. So now it's good, great news. Now you are in. Now what you need to do? If you register for the course, let's say four or five weeks before the course, maybe it's a good idea to go do pre-assessment. It's not required, but it's a good idea. Just assess your knowledge to see which area you are weak, which area you are good. It's just a good exercise. But if you are only one week before the course, don't waste your time with the pre-assessment. What you need to do is you need to focus on the review sessions. The focus is on the review sessions. So we have four in the review session, so many questions you need to answer. So you can see the sections here. We have financial transactions, we have law, we have investigation, we have fraud prevention. Usually my style of teach, I teach the first section investigation. Then I go over financial transaction. Then I go over law, 
then I go over fraud prevention and deterrence. This is the style of delivering the, the, the sessions in most of my classes. So what I recommend you to do, the first section now, if you are gonna study, you go investigation. So you click on investigation. Once you click on investigation, you can see here so many things under investigation. You can see here uh, related to analyzing evidence, related to interviewing investigation. The way you are gonna study, you, we already have give you the study book or in case you didn't collect it, you will collect it in the class. But what you need to do now, if you have the study book, you study one section in the study book, one chapter in the study book, then you go here, you unclick include all topics. Then let's say you study the section related to writing report. You go click writing report. You go down, make sure you click unanswered, incorrectly answered, marked and coll collect, uh, collect, uh, collect, uh, correctly answered. And then you click here, start review session. Then the session will start and then you can answer every question. You can hit, hit submit and you can see the results. In some of your browsers, maybe you have issues with the sizing so you don't see the bottom submit. So what you can do in that case, you can just hit enter and by hitting enter, it will record exactly the, your answer and it will show you the result. Sometimes you have to resize your window to make sure you are getting the right things. Now you want to know why this answer is right or wrong on the bottom, you can click to access the fraud examination manual and you can see exactly why your answer is right or wrong. And then you can go question by question, you can answer every question and see your result. Once you finish from this, you can say end exam. They say, are you sure you want to end your exam? And then you end your exam. Now you want to start a new review session. What you go again on the uh, right hand side, you can see something called a new review session. You click on it. Then you go to the investigation on the top on the menu, and then you can select not to include all topics. You select the topic you have studied in your book. My strategy is the following. You study one topic in your book, you do the questions for it. So before you attend my class, make sure you study as much as possible, at least finish the investigation and financial. So go study one chapter in the book, do the questions for it. Study one chapter in the book, do the questions for it. And in that way, you are ready to pass the exam with me from the first time. Now, some individual will say, what about this practice exam? Can I take the practice exam more than one time? Or can I take the review sessions more than one time? The review sessions, you can take them as many times as you want. There is no limitations for it. So don't worry about that. As for the practice exam, my recommendation, don't waste your time taking the practice exam. Unless you are actually scoring very high in the review session and you want to feel how the exam will look like. Why? Let me tell you, the practice exam, the questions are the same questions from the review session. Nothing changed. They are only giving you the atmosphere of the exam and they are not telling you which answer is correct, which answer is incorrect. The meaning, if you take the practice exam and score 85, I'm concerned, why? Because there are 15 questions, you don't know what is the correct answer for them and you answer them incorrectly. So maybe in the exam, most likely you are gonna answer them incorrectly again. So if you want to really test your knowledge, what you can do, this is for individuals who are really studying. They want to test their knowledge. You can select review session. Again, don't select include all. Select the session you want to do and go down and select the, answer, the questions answers incorrectly. So incorrectly answer the question. So my suggestion, go and redo the questions that you answered incorrectly rather than doing a practice exam because it's not actually gonna add so much value to you other than feeling how the exam will look like. Studying from the book and doing these uh, 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 review sessions is very useful. So in that way, you are ready for my class. But in my class, I give you everything you need. You already have your book. Your book is highlighted with all the questions in the exam. We are going to go over them, explain them to you. And by you practicing this exam, you are ready. You can take the uh, class with me and pass the exam easily from the first time. I hope that this video was helpful in highlighting these issues for you. As for your exam codes, don't worry. We give you the exam code during the class. So don't you don't have to request your exam code. You don't need to worry about if your application is approved or not. We handle all that for you. As long as you submit your application, you are in good hands. So take care, study, and I see you soon in the class.